Hello eBayers and welcome to this eBay auction demonstration video for this fantastic Ajax metal turning lathe. I'm going to show this in operation shortly. Um, let's just go through a few headline facts. Very important, I'm going to ask my cameraman to pan down and you'll see lots of accessories. We have a four jaw chuck, that's an independent chuck, so each of the jaws can be moved separately. Let's get that out. Very, very heavy. Um, I don't think that's ever been used. Uh, it does not appear to have had anything in it. It is excellent. It is always just lived under the machine. Uh, we've got a base plate there. It can also be used as a catch plate. We've got a fixed steady. Again, I don't think that's been used. The whole machine is in fantastic condition, uh, as I will show you in more detail in a minute. Uh, we've also got a homemade milling attachment. So that fits on here, and you can actually, with the combination of the two axes of uh, the slide and, uh, and this, you can use that for um, milling. Um, it's quite useful indeed. Let's put that back there. So, it's a single phase lathe. Uh, now showing. So it runs off any standard 230, 240 volt main supply. Uh, we've got it powered up now, hence the light. Um, very nice mechanism here. I'm going to invite the cameraman to uh, come a little bit further forward and show that. In fact, we're going to do better than that. I'm going to take the camera because this is so clever. Uh, what happens is when you close the lid, it tightens the belt. When you lift the lid up, it allows you to change speed. So that gives you um, three different speeds there. Also, there's a back gear arrangement. Uh, rather uniquely on this lathe, it's a front gear. It's not at the back, it's at the front. But basically, there's uh, Allen screws there. Um, the Allen keys are included. If you undo those and use this lever here and engage the back gear, you've got much slower drive. So in combination there, you've actually got 12 spindle speeds. Uh, you can see them there, the direct um, and the back gear, six and six. Uh, that is a useful addition. Uh, in fact, while we're just looking in detail, we've got the screw cutter gearbox, which does metric and imperial. Um, this cover comes off and there's there's gears in there, but you don't need to change those. This is all through um, A, B, C, D and E, and one to eight there, give you a combination of those charts. I think, from memory, it's something like 40 Whitworth threads and 30 metric threads, um, something like that. Um, there we go. Uh, another important feature of this lathe is it's got power sliding and surfacing, which means as well as the lead screw here for screw cutting, you've got a power feed bar here, uh, which basically saves wear on the lead screw and means the combinations of engaging this lever here, uh, you can bring it over here, go down, and that um, basically gives you power feed on this axis, and you can go across and up, oh, it needs to be turned in to engage, um, and that gives you feed on this axis. Uh, and the direction of that can be controlled with this control here, forwards and back, uh, and the either the lead screw or the power feed bar can be selected with this control here. So it's quite possible to do left-handed threads or to go either direction, or for instance, for um, parting off, um, you, can, uh, you can do cuts in different directions. It's quite useful in, in that manner. Um, because you can reverse the spindle here, uh, just looking at it, so it's electrically um, gives you different directions of the spindle. You can come from the back for parting off and go the other way, lots of things like that. Quite useful. Um, just thinking there's a control box there, I've not opened that actually, but you can see all the wiring, it's, it's just like new. The machine's dated 1988. Um, it's, I believe, a Taiwanese produced machine, but for the English distributors there, as you can see. So it's built a much higher quality. I think they call this a special model. Um, because 
the um, the lesser ones don't have this back gear arrangement at the front. Um, that is uh, it's quite special. If you look on that lovely site, lathes.co.uk, you will see this is known as the modified model. This is the, the better one. It is an induction hardened bed, which is wonderful. Uh, they are ground and hardened, um, and that's a very wide design, a bit like a Colchester, I suppose, a Colchester mascot or something. Really nice wide design, very stable. Um, you've got a thread dial indicator here for screw cutting. Um, these controls are all absolutely lovely to operate, um, and I, I will show you that uh, working in a, in a moment. Um, just to complete, while we're on the accessories, we've got various um, spanners, keys, uh, the, um, I think that's Morse Taper 3, yes, Morse Taper 3 tailstock. There, obviously you've got your key, oh, you see the condition, I think this is probably done a handful of jobs in its life, it really is in just perfect condition. Um, there is a Morse Taper dead centre, um, cutters as well, uh, chuck key reverse jaws for the chuck. Um, four jaw doesn't have reverse jaws, these come out and go the other way. Um, but because of the angling on the teeth on a automatic three jaw, uh, you have to have a different set. And uh, again, just see that excellent condition there. If that's focusing there, just delightful. Um, there we go, you see all the nice graduations, easy to read. Uh, metric and Imperial on there. Metric and Imperial on here as well. Just wind that out a bit. Um, I'm hoping that uh, the video is going to convey the quality. Uh, original maker stand, not put all the bolts in. Uh, someone's put these bars to raise it up a bit, which is no bad thing. Uh, so it gives a lot more clearance underneath for putting your tools and for cleaning the swarf. And that's good. Uh, single phase as I say, motor, nice big one horsepower motor there. Let's see if I can get the plate on it, people might be interested in seeing that. All on there. And again, you just see lovely condition. It's been kept well oiled as well. Um, right down to having the conduit here. So, so not my extension lead over. Back to the cameraman. And let's see this in operation. So, um, very simple controls green for forward and yellow for reverse. Obviously, we're going to go forward on this one. Um, I've set up a speed and um, we'll do a bit of a cut. Um, I'm going to use this control here for the um, spindle direction. So, let me just show you that before we do any cutting. Um, <laughs> Thank you. 
say change the direction of the spindle which is that one and we can also use the power feed in, uh, in that direction to uh, finish the surface finish uh, button there and bring this control over. Operate, if you're operating freehand they recommend that you put that control in the middle and that basically means that neither lead screw nor power feed is on like that and you just use it as a manual lead you just go straight in what else there is to point out really. Great lathe, not done a lot of work. Um, they don't build them of this quality anymore. This is, uh, this is a really, really well finished machine. Um, lots of lubrication points, which is good. Carriage lock here, compound lock there. You know, do the usual, no play in anything. Full weight tool post. Didn't need to be that tight. So you can angle it and you can do what you need to do there. Um, you can get the quick change for that if you so prefer. But the problem with the quick change is you end up having to buy all the different uh, holders. So that's perfectly acceptable and you just put 
four tools in, you can spin it around for what you need to do. Um, what else? Logistics would be a good one. Uh, this is uh, only loosely bolted down at the moment to the top and I've got an engine crane there. So when it comes to moving this, uh, if you want to load it on a trailer in two halves, uh, that's easy. However, more interestingly, I've got a forklift. So if you bring a trailer, I can come straight in and lift it on in one go. Or probably we can take the lathe off, put the lathe down, then put the stand next to it. So uh, van or trailer will be fine. Um, I'm always a bit reticent strapping it to a pallet for pallet services because they don't handle the things in the best manner possible. So I really would prefer that the buyer comes to collect uh, and I'd also like the buyer to come and bring cash please. Uh, PayPal fees are quite expensive. Um, but there we go. Uh, I'm sure the winning bidder will be delighted. It's a fantastic machine. Uh, it's only for sale because I've too many machine tools and uh, this has sat unused for long enough now so uh, it needs to go.